E-Cancer Television continues our look at blood cancers in the elderly here in Rome with Professor Gareth Morgan. Gareth, you've just been talking about maintenance therapy in multiple myeloma. Now, what is the importance of maintenance therapy as far as your research has shown? One of the important new concepts, I think, in the treatment of myeloma is once you've got a patient into a response, is how do you hold them in that response for a prolonged period of time with the aim of improving their overall survival. And I think since the development of, of the image drugs, which have this very interesting mode of action, which I think modulates the behavior of the residual myeloma cells when they're in a remission, I think that we're starting to see improvement in progression-free survival that translates into overall survival. And the biology underlying all of that is a very um, productive area, I think, that we need to study in more detail. So there are now hard data on the use of IMID drugs in maintenance? Yeah, very much so. Uh, there's, uh, I think, at least three studies that show that if you continue uh, the use of uh, lenalidomide long term, that you're able to control the myeloma clone and prevent relapse. And the, si the significance of the data is largely that there is such a big difference uh, between the maintained and non-maintained group that I think this is going to turn into a survival benefit for patients. And although there's a big variety of agents, well, fairly good variety of agents for induction, in maintenance it's just the images that are emerging, is it? Yeah, as, as we were discussing, the, there's a historical perspective to all of this, which um, people have tried maintenance drugs in the past, and we've used steroids, interferon, alkylating agents, and none of them proved successful, largely because of their side effect profile. But with the imid drugs, and lenalidomide in particular, it's got a very favourable side effect profile, which allows you to leave people on it, and it doesn't impact their quality of life. And I think because of this, that we really are starting to see now a resurgence in this uh, idea in my... Although, although with side effects, the lidomide did uh, blaze the trail, didn't it? Yes, yeah, so um, we, we've done a large study with uh, thalidomide maintenance and um, part of the issue with it was that patients only managed to stay on it on average seven months so for a maintenance strategy really you should stay on it till disease progression but you learn a lot from the study of, uh, of these older drugs like thalidomide and we can see that um, any thalidomide exposure is better than no thalidomide exposure the very best outcome was when thalidomide was used for induction and maintenance. However, um, if you didn't get the thalidomide in induction, you could use it in maintenance and overcome some of the negative um, impacts of, of that omission in presentation. And so I think this is a very important lesson about how to use lenalidomide and also brings up this issue of sequencing of cancer drugs and the therapeutic armamentarium in myeloma has now got much better than it was and we're starting to have the ability to select drugs which have a profile good for induction and drugs which have a better profile for maintenance. Could you give me some idea of just how much extension of life and progression free survival you can get with IMID maintenance? So it's very difficult to put a, a figure on it um, at this point in time because the improvement in survival or progression-free survival at least has been so good that the lenalidomide maintained group haven't hit their medians because we normally talk about you know a median of this versus a median of that so in terms of a hazard ratio there's about an 80 percent reduction in the risk of relapse which is you know at a very high p-value so that makes it very very significant I think. very exciting indeed um, and specifically, uh, with respect to older patients, um, w what's the relevance of all of this rather than younger patients with multiple myeloma? So um, in younger patients, you would try to get them to a transplant and probably now you'd want to give them some form of maintenance, preferably with lenalidomide. And that's the data from the two studies, the CLGB and the IFM study. In the elderly group of patients, you have to be 
a lot more careful about side effect profiles. And so the addition of extra drugs to, to induction can cause some fallout of patients. And similarly, you know, elderly people become very pragmatic about their survival, and they're not so much concerned about six months improvement in survival and are much more concerned about their quality of life. So the issue with thalidomide was quality of life, whereas with Revlimid, if you're not having that impairment in quality of life, the improvement in survival is you know, doubly beneficial because you live longer and you feel good. What about performance status, comorbidities and so on? How much can you assess your patients to be suitable for uh, uh, IMID maintenance therapy? So there are two, two components to that question. One is the induction component, which you didn't allude to, but I think it's very important because I think in the extreme elderly or the frail, you need to reduce the intensity of treatment to get more people to a stable phase where you can think about maintenance. But once you've got through that uh, induction phase, if you've tolerated the drugs, if you're well, then I think it would be suitable for the vast majority of patients because you know, in the absence of steroids, it's very tolerable and has very few side effects. So to sum up, what would you say are the messages coming out of your presentation on um, maintenance therapy in older patients with multiple myeloma? Well, I, I think the major take-home message is that the results of the clinical trials are starting to show that we're improving progression-free survival and that this is turning into overall survival benefits and that the treatment is tolerable and going forward we need to consider maintenance strategies for people of all age groups and especially in the elderly. And from what you're saying, lenalidomide is a front runner, but there are other IMIDs on the way too, aren't there? Absolutely. And uh, I look forward to a stage where you can have a series of um, relapse treatment, relapse options that are based around a sequential use of different IMID drugs which have different characteristics. Gareth Morgan, thank you very much for joining us on eCancer Television.